Welcome to the University of Manitoba campuses, located on the original lands of the Anishinaabe, the Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and on the homeland of the Métis Nation. We respect the treaties that were made on these territories. We acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past, and we dedicate ourselves to move forward in partnership with Indigenous communities in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. Good morning and welcome, Prime Minister, MP Duguid, MP Lamaru, President Benarash, colleagues, students, and guests. I'm Marcia Friesen. I am the Dean of the Price Faculty of Engineering, and I'm so incredibly pleased to welcome you here today to the University of Manitoba. We are Western Canada's oldest engineering school, educating students for Canada's diverse industries, advancing impactful research for Canada's needs, and reaching into our communities. Imperatives around clean tech and sustainable design drive much of our teaching and research. Today we are here in the Price Innovation and Prototyping Centre, a space dedicated to student design competition teams and where students advance their technical and leadership skills. Whether their interests are in electric vehicles, satellites and rockets, wind turbines, biomedical devices or concrete toboggans and much more, we have about 20 teams in which half of our students participate at some point in, our in their degree, and I'm so pleased that you, the Prime Minister, had a chance to meet some of them today. These students take the teams to national and international competition with impressive results, and our Shell Eco Marathon Solar Car team is currently in Indianapolis doing just that right now. We're also so proud of our ENGA program, an access program for Indigenous students in engineering, the longest running and most successful access program in Canada. And it was a group of NGAP students who brought the idea of an eco-marathon solar car team to us as faculty leaders only a few years ago. Thank you again for being here at the Price Faculty of Engineering and letting us introduce you to our students and our work on behalf of Manitoba and Canada. And I welcome University President and Vice Chancellor Michael Benarosh to bring greetings. Thank you, Marcia. It, it, it is really an honor for us here at the University of Manitoba to host uh, the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau as he tours some of U of M's innovative research laboratories dedicated to advancing clean technology. At the University of Manitoba, we pursue big ideas, and thanks to our incredible faculty and globally unique research spaces, U of M is a leader in understanding and adapting to climate change. I'd really like to thank the federal government for its leadership in supporting the bold endeavors that University of Manitoba leads. And I'd like to talk about four areas quickly. Truth and reconciliation, climate change, innovation, and research to train highly qualified personnel. Specifically, I also want to thank our MP, Terry Duguid, for his advocacy for the permanent home of the National Center for Truth and Reconciliation here at the University of Manitoba. And we're grateful to this government for providing operating funds and capital funds, $85 million, to secure the NCTR's future. This internationally significant site will be a place of learning and dialogue where the truths of residential school experience will be honored and kept safe for generations. I also want to thank the government for investing in our Fort Garry campus. Um, there's been support uh, here on campus for our district energy upgrades and the purchase of new energy efficient ice plant through the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program. And these, investing, these investments are helping us reach our goal of becoming carbon neutral um, as an institution. The government has also supported U of M researchers um, through a number of uh, initiatives, and, and you see some of this here today. The Stanley Pauley Building um, was helped with support of federal government funds, and you see the students and the highly trained uh, engineers that begin their careers here, but go out into the world uh, and innovate. In addition, there's been support for an innovation hub, our industrial hub, which is next to the University of Manitoba. Again, creating a pathway for our researchers and our students to lead to innovations and technological change. Um, likewise, the uh, government has helped fund the, uh, 
the Churchill Marine Observatory, which is working toward advancing climate change. So for us here at the University of Manitoba, um, these partnerships have helped advance our mission. And then finally, I'd like to say that the federal government is also pursuing the big idea of creating a national dental program, and our dental faculty is, is ready to help serve our population and to partner to be a champion um, for universal health, uh, dental care um, here in Manitoba. And, and so I would like to thank all of our partners, um, our researchers, and um, leaders here who are mitigating the global crisis that threatens our economy, are helping advance health, uh, better health outcomes within our province, improving supply chains, advancing truth and reconciliation um, within our country. Um, the discoveries taking place here spur and advance um, these changes that are so necessary today. So it's now my privilege to invite Terry Duguid, who is Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Environment and Climate Change, the Member of Parliament for Winnipeg South, and a tireless advocate and friend of the University of Manitoba. Terry. Well, thank you, uh, President uh, Benarash, for your generous uh, words, uh, for your partnership, and for your incredible leadership at this uh, wonderful learning institution. Uh, bonjour tout le monde. Uh, C'est un grand plaisir d'être ici avec vous ce matin, uh, ici sur le campus uh, de l'Université de Manitoba, au cours de ma circonscription de, de Winnipeg Sud. Uh, well, it's great to be with, uh, with all of you to introduce our Prime Minister and to welcome him to the welcome him to the University of Manitoba's Fort Garry campus here in the heart of uh, Winnipeg South and I'm absolutely thrilled he will be able to see some of the cutting-edge uh, innovation uh, that takes place every day here at the Price Faculty of Engineering and be here to meet the students, professors and, uh, and researchers uh, who are working hard to create important technology that will drive Canada's clean economy forward. And, uh, I have made uh, many announcements here uh, during my uh, seven and a half year uh, tenure as, as the representative for Winnipeg South. Uh, uh, the president mentioned uh, some of them, the innovation hub in Smart Park, the expansion of this engineering building where we're standing right now, uh, many, many research uh, funding awards. And, and I never get tired of saying at each announcement, and I'll say it again, that the science, the science, the research of today is the economy and good jobs of tomorrow. And when I look out at the, uh, I look behind me rather at the capable hands and minds of these uh, young engineers and students uh, behind me, I must say uh, their future and the future of Canada's economy is looking very bright indeed. So without further ado, I'm uh, here to tell you more about our exciting uh, progress in, in building uh, the clean economy. Uh, please join me in welcoming uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Prime Minister. Bonjour tout le monde. Thank you, Terry, for that introduction. And all you do is an outstanding voice for Winnipeg and for Manitoba. And great seeing you here as well, uh, Kevin. Thank for all the work you do. I want to recognize everyone with us from the University of Manitoba. Uh, thank you to the students who showed me around here and showed me all the exciting things. Thank you to uh, faculty and staff as well. And thanks to all of you outside for coming around too. Uh, it's great to see students taking, uh, taking an interest. I'll try and come say hi to you afterwards. Uh, it is so great to be here with the next generation of Canadian engineers and innovators. La semaine dernière, j'étais avec des étudiants au Collège Durham en Ontario. On a parlé d'économie, d'environnement et de leur vision de l'avenir. Les jeunes sont simplement des leaders de demain. Vous êtes des leaders d'aujourd'hui. Et notre gouvernement est là pour s'assurer que vous ayez les outils nécessaires pour réussir. Here at the Price Faculty of Engineering, I know many of you work on things like electric vehicles. Budget 2023 invests in the industries you will soon be leading. For example, the Clean Technology Manufacturing Tax Credit will provide up to 30% support for investments in new machinery and equipment for clean tech and for the resources like critical minerals that go into them. And while you're still in school, we're also helping to make things more affordable. We're increasing Canada student grants by 40%. We're raising the Canada student loan limit 
We're making it easier for older students to access grants and loans. And remember, we have permanently eliminated interest on student and apprentice loans, which went into effect earlier this month. An investment in you is an investment in our economy, in the middle class, and in a strong future. And that's what Budget 2023 is all about. Le budget 2023, c'est notre plan pour créer de bons emplois, rendre la vie plus abordable pour la classe moyenne, bâtir une économie propre et investir dans la santé des Canadiens. Ce budget donne suite au travail qu'on fait depuis déjà des années pour soutenir la classe moyenne tout en faisant croître notre économie. Budget 2023 builds on what we've already done to grow our economy while making life more affordable for the middle class. Whether that's $10 a day childcare, something we achieved three years ahead of schedule in this province, or putting a price on pollution that puts money back in people's pockets. In fact, on Friday, Manitobans will get their spring climate action incentive checks. This is how we return the proceeds of pollution pricing directly to families. So watch for your payment on Friday here in Manitoba. A family of four here will get $264 every three months for a total of $1,056 this year alone. That's how we fight climate change while supporting hardworking families across Manitoba and across the country. While conservative politicians say they'd make pollution free again and take away these climate action incentive checks, well, they also say they'll oppose this budget with a plan for great careers, for building a clean economy, and for making life more affordable, including with better health care outcomes and support for dental care for those who can't afford it. For our part, we'll keep standing up for families, for students, for workers, and for all Canadians. Encore une fois, merci beaucoup de l'accueil ici aujourd'hui. Je suis maintenant heureux de prendre les questions des médias. Starting with CBC, one question, one follow-up. CBC, over to you. Hello, thank you for taking our questions. Karen Pauls from CBC National News. And if you could answer in English en français as well, that would be great. More than 150,000 federal service workers are prepared to go on strike this week. They say they were vital to Canadians during the pandemic, but most make between 40 and $60,000 a year. And they say they want to strike because the federal government hasn't raised their wages to deal with the cost of living. How does your government ensure these workers of their value? First of all, um, the past few years have been extraordinarily difficult and federal public servants stepped up to deliver programs like the CERB, like the small business supports, like family and senior supports uh, that made a huge difference. And we recognize the incredible work that federal public servants uh, have done. We also recognize it for everyone. The cost of living, particularly because of inflation, is a real challenge. That's one of the reasons why in this budget we're stepping up with the, uh, with the grocery rebate to help uh, families who need that help in the coming months while inflation remains high. At the same time, we are seeing inflation starting to come down and some predict uh, that it'll be down around 3% if not lower by this summer. So that's good news for everyone. Uh, on uh, the collective bargaining that's going on right now, it's really important that that happens at the collective bargaining table. That's where the best and the right deals get, uh, get done, and that's why we're going to continue to engage in a constructive way uh, at the bargaining table. Um, tout d'abord, uh, je veux reconnaître, et je, je dois reconnaître, uh, que uh, la fonction publique fédérale a fait du travail extraordinaire au cours des dernières années pour livrer uh, les choses, les programmes comme la PCU, comme l'appui aux petites entreprises, comme uh, des, des appuis extrêmement importants dans des moments difficiles de la pandémie. On reconnaît aussi que les coûts de la vie sont élevés pour tout le monde maintenant, particulièrement à cause de l'inflation. Euh, et c'est pour ça, d'ailleurs, qu'on a livré dans notre budget le remboursement ou le rabais euh, pour euh, l'épicerie, euh, qui va aider énormément de familles à travers la province, à travers le pays. Euh, mais euh, par rapport à, à la, euh, à la, aux conventions collectives, euh, on sait que c'est des négociations à la table, des négociations qui sont Euh, les plus importants, et c'est comme ça qu'on va s'assurer euh, qu'on arrive à une solution équitable pour tout le monde. En suivi. Uh, will you extend the number of Afghans you're bringing to Canada beyond the 40,000 you originally agreed to? Um, Canadians have uh, deep connections to the people of Afghanistan. Many Canadians 
uh, sacrificed their lives. Uh, many, many more uh, were there to help fight for democracy and education for girls and uh, important issues uh, in Afghanistan. So it is heartbreaking to see uh, what's happening as the Taliban is taking over. Uh, we committed in uh, one of the most generous uh, targets of any country around the world uh, to repatriate, uh, to bring to Canada 40,000 uh, vulnerable Afghans, and we will continue uh, to be there to support people as much as possible. Uh, we're continuing to work on fulfilling those numbers, and we'll uh, look to what we can and must do in the future in other ways. Question, question. Next question. Dan Sanders with APTN National News. Uh, First Nations leaders in the Prairie Provinces are becoming increasingly alarmed at what their governments are doing uh, with regard to natural resources and exerting their um, assumed authority. Uh, they're wanting a place at the table. So what can you do to assure them that they'll be heard in any consultations? As a federal government, we have been very clear that reconciliation is uh, an essential priority, not just uh, for Canada as a moral imperative, as the right thing to do for our country to fix and to, uh, to counter the decades, generations, and even centuries of uh, colonial and um, extraordinarily damaging practices. Uh, but it's also about building a strong economy for the future. As we look to uh, developing the critical uh, minerals and natural resources needed for coming years, as we look uh, to building a stronger future with great jobs right across the country, Indigenous peoples need to be partners in how we develop land, how we move forward in respectful, responsible ways. Uh, we, of course, at the federal government are very much committed to bringing in uh, the uh, actions around the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People uh, that we have within our jurisdiction. We will continue to work with provinces to ensure that they are also moving forward on the path of reconciliation. Uh, this is something that unfortunately we've seen conservative politicians across the country uh, not take as seriously as either our moral responsibilities or our economic responsibilities would require. Following up. Bonjour, Monsieur Trudeau pour Radio-Canada. Au-delà de son nom, des liens directs qui existent entre des membres de votre famille et la Fondation Trudeau, pour assurer sa survie, la Fondation doit-elle couper tous les liens avec votre famille, voire même se débarrasser du nom Trudeau Moi, ça fait euh, dix ans que je n'ai plus aucune connexion avec euh, la Fondation qui porte le nom de mon père. Euh, et je sais qu'il y a des réflexions et des questions qui se posent maintenant, mais c'est la Fondation elle-même qui, euh, euh, qui doit être chargée de, de répondre et de, de figurer euh, comment avancer. Uh, it's been 10 years that I have had no involvement at all uh, with the foundation that carries my father's name. Uh, I think it's important that the foundation itself answers these questions and reflects on how it can continue doing the important work that it does. Euh, vu le climat de suspicion qui règne déjà dans ce dossier, est-ce que David Johnson peut toujours rester en poste comme rapporteur spécial sur l'ingérence chinoise en sachant qu'il était membre de la Fondation And in English, please. Comme vous savez tous, David Johnston est un homme irréprochable avec euh, la capacité et le dévouement au service envers le pays qui fait de lui euh, la parfaite personne pour euh, regarder ces enjeux compliqués d'ingérence euh, euh, à l'intérieur de notre, notre, notre système politique. Euh, je continue d'avoir confiance en lui. David Johnston uh, is one of the uh, most um, appropriate, and he's, he's a man of incredible integrity. Uh, his ability uh, to look into the question of foreign interference in our political systems uh, remains uh, something that is extremely important to do and extremely important to take seriously. And I will highlight as well that uh, the uh, snarkiness with which uh, the leader of the official opposition is approaching these serious issues uh, doesn't do him any credit, and it doesn't do credit to the kinds of serious discussions need to be had around foreign interference. Next question. Hi, I'm Prime Minister Marnie Blunt with Global News. Um, the federal budget suggests the government is going to introduce privacy rules for uh, federal political parties in terms of how they collect and use um, data on from Canadian voters. Uh, that's something that privacy advocates have been calling for for quite some time. Is this something uh, you will commit to and why just now? One of the things that we've discovered over, over the past number of years is different provinces are moving forward with privacy regimes that do vary from one 
uh, region to the next. Uh, it's going to be important that we make sure that our federal electoral system and our federal uh, rules around political parties are uh, homogenous and cohesive uh, for political parties that work in jurisdictions across this country, and that's something that we've committed to move forward with. Following up. When can uh, Canadians expect to see their uh, grocery rebate checks, and how do you respond to criticism that that isn't a long-term solution for Canadians that are already struggling with affordability? The long-term solution for affordability is two things. Bring down inflation and grow the economy with lots of great jobs for Canadians. And that's what this budget is focused on. Uh, we're seeing that the targeted investments we're making, including with the grocery rebate that will help 11 million Canadians in the short term, uh, is going to make a real difference at this moment. Uh, whereas the investments we're making in growing the economy, creating great jobs for the middle class uh, in uh, areas of innovation and uh, greener technology is very, very exciting. And that's a key part of it as well. Uh, but as you point out, we need to get that grocery rebate passed quickly. So we are hoping uh, that on this case, uh, all parties in the House will recognize that getting support out to Canadians rapidly really matters. Uh, we will be working as quickly as possible to deliver that help for Canadians, but it depends very much on the will of Parliament, which is why we're calling on everyone to accelerate this targeted support to Canadians that uh, we put as part of our budget. We are going to be there to support Canadians with, with affordability right now as we watch inflation come down, as we build a strong economy for the future. Prochaine question. Okay. Uh, pardon. Oh, pardon. Um, Nous savons que les défis au niveau euh, du coût de la vie sont réels pour les familles. Et il y a deux solutions. D'abord, c'est de voir l'inflation se réduire. Euh, c'est ce qu'on est en train de faire avec nos mesures ciblées qui, euh, qui voient que l'inflation va descendre jusqu'à peut-être 3 % cet été. Mais aussi, on est là pour créer de la croissance économique et des, des excellents emplois pour la classe moyenne. Ça fait partie de notre plan dans le budget 2023. Mais pour livrer le rabais de l'épicerie, qui va aider 11 millions de Canadiens à travers le pays, euh, il faut que tous les parlementaires travaillent ensemble. Donc, c'est à ce niveau-là qu'on est en train de travailler et d'espérer que tous les partis, y compris le Parti conservateur, qui a voté contre euh, l'aide aux soins dentaires, par exemple, ou voté contre l'aide euh, aux, euh, aux locataires à faible revenu, euh, vont permettre d'accélérer la livraison de cette aide avec le rabais de l'épicerie. Prochaine question. Hi, I'm Black from the Free Press. I wanted to ask about the Natural Resources Transfer Act. Uh, is it appropriate, in your opinion, to review the agreements, and how do you address the concerns raised by the Prairie Premiers? Let me be very clear. Uh, the Minister of Justice uh, said no such thing. If you actually look at his remarks, um, it is very clear that we're talking about the importance of the federal government living up to our responsibilities under UNDRIP, something that unfortunately the Prairie Premiers have not taken seriously, and they are instead trying to um, elevate fears that have absolutely no grounding in truth. Uh, we know we need to move forward in true reconciliation and partnership uh, with Indigenous peoples, and that's something that we certainly hope we're going to be able to work on uh, with the Premiers uh, and with Indigenous peoples uh, to be able to grow the economy and create those great jobs, including uh, in natural resources, uh, that are going to be there for decades to come as we move towards a net zero world. Following up. Uh, another question. With Canada dramatically increasing its immigration targets at a time where, you know, here in Manitoba, there's a shortage of affordable housing and rising homelessness. Uh, what will the federal government do to make sure uh, those people can be housed? We know that uh, immigration is actually part of the solution to the housing crisis. We're seeing significant labor shortages in the construction industry, uh, in the healthcare industry, in so many different areas where we know we need people to come and uh, contribute to our communities. That's why we're very much focused on delivering that. At the same time, we've put forward a $4 billion housing accelerator program that flows money directly to municipalities so that they can create 100,000 new homes uh, over the coming years. This is something that we know we can do uh, and it, does, it happens while working together. While conservative politicians continue to try to pick, fight and pick fights and make threats to municipalities, we're actually there to help fund the building of new homes in very, very real ways to alleviate these challenges as our economy and our population continues to grow. Next question. 
Steve Lambert from the Canadian Press. Morning, Prime Minister. Uh, I want to follow up on a colleague's question about the strike mandate for the public sector union. Um, given the delays we've seen not that long ago in terms of passports uh, renewals and immigration files, if, if there is a work disruption, what can you do, what can the federal government do to guarantee that service will not be uh, massively disrupted? Obviously, we're uh, looking very closely to ensure that we continue to deliver the important services that uh, Canadians rely on the federal government for. Uh, however, we also believe in collective bargaining, and that is where uh, the discussions at the table with the public service unions uh, continue to happen in robust ways. Uh, we know they are uh, challenged with the rising cost of living, as so many people are. Uh, we see inflation starting to come down, and those conversations will continue to happen at the bargaining table. The House of Commons Defence Committee is currently in Taiwan, as you know, and the, the chair says the visit is intended in part to show united support for Taiwan in the face of Chinese bullying. Do you agree with the committee's decision to visit and its words of support for Taiwan? Committees and parliamentarians make their own determinations, but I think it's extremely important to show our support for democratic values and principles around the world. Uh, China's aggressive actions in the Taiwan Straits and around Taiwan uh, are uh, problematic, and we really hope that there will be a de-escalation of tensions in the region. Uh, we will continue to stand for our values. We will continue to stand up for democracies everywhere around the world, uh, because that's what Canadians expect us to do. Okay. Uh, Évidemment, les parlementaires et les comités de parlementaires euh, prennent leurs décisions de façon indépendante euh, sur leurs déplacements et sur leurs engagements. Mais je suis tout à fait d'accord qu'il faut être là pour soutenir les démocraties et soutenir nos valeurs à travers le monde. Euh, C'est ce que nous allons continuer de faire par rapport à, à Taïwan. C'est euh, aussi pourquoi nous déplorons euh, les actions agressives de la Chine euh, qui cherche à élever les tensions à un moment où on devrait voir une réduction des tensions et euh, plus de plus de, de discussions et de et de euh, et de paix dans la région et moins de de, de tensions et de d'inquiétude. Last question. Uh, hi, Mr. Prime Minister Jeff Keel, CTV Winnipeg. Um, I'm just wondering if you believe should Orange Shirt Day be a statutory holiday in all provinces and territories? One of the 96 calls to action from the uh, National, uh, uh, National uh, Commission into uh, Truth and Reconciliation was uh, that there be a day of reconciliation, uh, a day for truth and reconciliation uh, that would be a holiday. Um, at the federal government and in consultation with Indigenous peoples, uh, we determined that that day should be on uh, what was known as Orange Shirt Day, uh, September 30th. Uh, that is a day that Indigenous peoples wanted to be marking truth and reconciliation and all the challenges and difficulties that came from that. That is why, as a federal government, we moved forward on living up and fulfilling that calls to action, and we declared it a federal holiday. Uh, we certainly hope that provinces would uh, realize their responsibility in the path of reconciliation and take on uh, the actions laid out in the calls to action, uh, but those obviously are decisions for the provinces to make. At the federal level, we believe uh, that we needed to have a day for truth and reconciliation, and that's what we did with Orange Shirt Day on uh, September 30th. Following up. You, you say the decision is up to the provinces, but would you like to see the provinces move forward with that as the federal government has? I would very much like to see provinces move forward more seriously on reconciliation than, uh, than they have been. There are some provinces that have done an extraordinary job of recognizing UNDRIP, the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, of moving forward in tangible ways uh, around resource sharing, uh, around partnerships uh, with Indigenous Peoples that have uh, not just benefited uh, people in the province in general, but has directly benefited the economic growth and opportunities for people Indigenous and non-Indigenous in the provinces. There are some provinces that have not moved forward as quickly or strongly uh, or as, uh, as forcefully on the path of reconciliation as either the federal government has or as other provinces have. And I certainly would like to see more provinces or all provinces do more on reconciliation with Indigenous peoples. Thank you. This is what concludes today's press conference. Merci beaucoup tout le monde.